How old are you? I'm 21. You're 21. And so are you currently homeless? Technically, yes. Um, I've, uh, I've been living for the last you know, week or so um, with my grandma who has dementia. But prior to that, um, I'd been living out here on Wheeler Street. And I'd been living out here for about two years or so. Okay. Um, how did you end up on the streets out here on Wheeler Street in Olympia? Well, um, when I was 14, um, my mom and my dad had um, gave up their rights um, to me and they basically exiled me from the house and I was ostracized for my choice you know, of being gay at the time and now being transgender. And um, so basically I've been on my own, you know, um, trying to take care of myself, you know, and, you know, support myself and um, yeah. Well, thank you so much for being willing to talk to me today. Um, and so do you, so there's an encampment right behind us. Uh, do you stay there sometimes? Sometimes, yeah. So you have a lot of friends out here? I do, I do. I consider most of these people out here my family more so than my actual. Do you feel safe out here at night? I do. I you do? do. Okay. Um, uh, I feel more safe, you know, around the people that stay here, but what doesn't make it safe sometimes is the people that, you know, have a hatred towards the homeless or the people that, you know, have a vendetta or that just, you know, don't like to see the homeless around and they, you know, have posed a lot of threats. We've had, there's been a couple of times when they've actually set off like, like, um, homemade, uh, fire bomb, like, like, um, uh, pipe bombs and they've came by and thrown eggs at us. They've, they've done all kinds of terrible, nasty things. Every time they drive by, they honk, blare their horns all hours of day and night. And it's honestly, it's quite sad and it's fucking, it's hurtful. And also too, it's just, it's dangerous. You know what I mean? I feel, you know, more safe and comfortable around the people that are here than, you know, the people that have a, you know, hatred and ostracize, you know, the people that stay out here. So um, does addiction play a role in your life at all? Unfortunately, truthfully, yes, it does. But um, I'm, you know, currently working on trying to, you know, get clean and sober. Um, I try not to let, you know, all the things, you know, that are currently going on in my life and that have, you know, play a, you know, factor into me, you know, in, in my usage. And that's kind of like what I'm trying to work on in order to move past it. And um, it's just step by step. So um, how old were you when you started using? 14. 14. So right around the time your parents kicked you out. Yes. And, um, and so do you have contact with your parents at all now? And they only live 20 miles away. Mm, I'm sorry, that's got to be pretty hard. Um, what uh, substances do you currently use? Um, I use fentanyl and I use methamphetamine. How long have you been on fentanyl? About three years, but um, methamphetamine I've been on since 14. So, okay. yeah. And who did you first use? Was, was it somebody that you knew? No. It was just some person on the street? Okay. Um, and then... It was like a, it was like a, like a mutual, um, a, a friend of mine. Um, uh, it was their friend. So. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Um, so you said that you're trying to work on getting clean and sober. So how are you doing that? Where are you doing that at? Well, um, I've been wanting to um, explore, you know, different avenues of going to like a detox facility. Uh -huh. um, I'm just... The big thing with me is like once I'm you know, completed doing that is all the things that are going on in my life are going to make me you know, want to go back to using. So I'm trying to get myself to a stable, um, like stable housing, you know, stable, you know, life circumstances so that I don't feel like I need to go back and you know, use. You know, I'm a firm believer in uh, exposure enables adaptability. What you expose yourself to, you eventually are able to adapt around. And if it takes a couple of extra mistakes, you know what I mean, for me to try and get clean, you know what I mean, by not avoiding, you know, the environment and, you know, just the, um, the circumstances, then, I mean, I'm willing to take, you know, those couple of extra, you know, failures in order to, you know, later on be comfortable around it and, you know, in order to be exposed to it and be able to not, you know, give in or, you know, you know um, fulfill those urges, if that makes sense. So it's pretty, I think it's pretty great that your grandmother hasn't eliminated you from your life regardless of what your parents did so she's she doesn't have necessarily the fullest understanding sure you know but i mean but when, she when seems to love her, you regardless yeah and that's got to feel pretty good one of the only like the only family member that does is she has she been involved in your life throughout your ever since your parents kicked yeah. you out when i got kicked out she was and my uh, my grandfather who's now passed um about five years ago um they were the people that i moved in with after my parents had okay. kicked me out and so 
um, that kind of you know came to a, a boil and um, uh, after that is when I officially was like out you know in, on the street yeah so you're exploring some ideas with detox so there are folks that bring services out on the streets is that correct yes but a lot of the services that they offer are I don't do, know. do people come out and offer treatment to you guys not treatment they usually just come out and offer you know food water snack you know like snacks and um, do they offer you syringes and using apparatuses um, safe uh, safe uh, safe injection stuff yeah yeah but it just seems like like a lot of the, it's almost like they they just give us things you know to you know that to kind of help you stay okay in your situation yeah, but nothing to really like, help you farther improve you know, your or, like, quality of life exactly yeah it's basically uh, just like to comfort you in the time being but nothing that's going to actually like go towards you know working towards a you know a, a future that isn't out here or a future that you know doesn't involve drugs or a future that doesn't involve um, those kinds of things so well and i'm glad that you brought that up because that's where my brain was going next if you if your life could look or be different in any way, you know, and I want you to think outside of the scope of your abilities right now, right? Um, what would you want your life to look like? I would like to have a house mm -hmm. if I was in means to get it. Um, I would like to, you know, be clean. And I would also, um, I've been wanting to uh, start doing cosmetology or, you know, some kind of esthetician work and start, you know, focusing on like a career path like that. But it's just, I don't really know and have the tools to to know how to navigate that. Exactly. You know, being, you know, pushed out of the, you know, the house at so young, I wasn't, you know, you know, fortunate enough to, you know, develop those and learn those, you know, life skills like that because yeah. my parents chose to not be involved. So I, everything that I know from that point on is all, you know, myself. Yeah. And I, so I that, totally I'm can proud, relate. But also I'm, you know, uh, not necessarily ashamed but just it's it's tough to have to you know be around people that you know do have those skills and for me to not and not know how to you know go about it yeah if that makes sense you know so that's it just absolutely my biggest makes barrier. sense yeah. yeah it absolutely makes sense so if you had the opportunity you definitely live a different life and you have absolutely no idea how to navigate or even access the ability to do the things that you want to do which in reality seem pretty basic having a place to live being clean and sober and being able to get an education so that you could do something that makes you feel fulfilled yeah um and so and it's scary to you know think about to have all of those things without never having them before sure you know all in union and so that's another thing too is just like you know having that kind of support to you know like guide and you know um comfort you know the you know an individual that's going through those life processes in order to be able to successfully do them without failure yeah yeah uh, no, I, I think it's pretty natural to um, to think along those lines and to, you know, want those kind of things. I mean, those are pretty basic things. Um, if the folks that come out here to bring services could offer something, one thing, to those of you that are out here living in this kind of condition. and. And, and, you know, and I'll get a little bit more to that. What, what would that one thing be? I mean, if it, if it could be one thing, what do you think is the most important thing that they could offer? Access to like, access to housing and, you know, like a, um, like a, like a one step kind of like program maybe in order to like, you know, teach and, you know, help individuals be able to apply for the, you know, the things that they need to apply for and to be able to navigate the system in the way that the system needs to be navigated and to actually, you know, not just say, oh yeah, this is what we offer, but not, you know, give any way in how to do it. You know what I mean? Yep. So maybe like, like just, you know, a group of people or like a support system that would, you know, teach and, you know, rehabilitate, you know, some people that don't know how to yeah. be able to, you know, un um, understand it go about the path that they need to. So. I totally understand what you're saying. So do you think that if people that were coming out here actually had the experience of being a recovering addict or, you know, not knowing how to navigate life at some point, do you think that they would be a little more uh, suited to teach people how to do that? People with lived experience, for example. Yes, 100%. Like, I think that if somebody's never walked in, you know, those shoes, or if nobody's had the experience, like you said, um, that I really don't think they have a 
generalized enough understanding in order to offer those kinds of services. So yeah. if somebody, yeah, if they've been through it 100%, I would trust their judgment and their, you know, their knowledge and wisdom way more than I would that somebody that's just, you know, trying to, you know, trying to understand something that they really don't, you know what I mean? With all due respect. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I want to ask you a question just about the encampments as a whole. Um, are they comfortable, happy places that people live? out here do you think that people like their conditions no not at all do you how many how many people out here do you think use drugs a, a, most a, va a vast you know percentage but um yeah vast. yeah um out of those people do you think that people are, like their living conditions no no in that drugs, was my experience in, too yeah, and drugs are a they're, they're a coping mechanism. For and, sure. And a lot of people look down on them and a lot of people have a hatred and a, you know, a, 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 a nasty outlook on it. But in all reality, it's just the, the best, best, easiest and most ac like accessible way in order to comfort people, you know, in those conditions and stuff like that. You know, I, th I think that you know, people that are homeless compared to people that have houses, there's different, you know, kinds of, you know, comforts and, you know, vices and stuff like that. And I mean, the same vices don't exist in you know the opposite you know category of people i mean so in all reality it's just it's not as bad as you know as everybody makes it out to you know make yep. it out to be but i mean is as soon as we you know like understand you know what we can do in order to better our situations i feel like that those vices would change and i feel like drugs wouldn't necessarily be a part of that if, yeah. you know is there anything else that you would like everybody and that could potentially watch this video to know that just because you're in the situations that you are, you know, whether being homeless or, you know, not necessarily as privileged as other people, it doesn't make you less of a person. It just makes you more of a resilient person. And it makes you somebody that, you know, can handle different life situations better than some. And for that, they should be proud, not ashamed. Yeah. You know what I mean? And everybody, you know, eventually at some point, if they are experiencing the things that, you know, people like myself have experienced, it will get better and it will, it, It'll definitely not be the outlook that everybody, you know, sees, you know, that we're going to be in it for the rest of our lives. It's, it's going to change. It just takes time and yeah. time heals all wounds, you know? And it sounds like you think that if there was some sort of program that actually helped people walk through their challenges and learn how to navigate things differently and train people on how to support themselves and to be stable and independent, that not just you, but do you think a large percentage of people out here on the streets would support that and try to practice and participate in that so they could have a better life? Yes. Well, I'd love that you said that and I'm gonna tell you why, because I have created a program to do just that because I'm a person that was out here. And to hear you say that out loud with me and you not ever having a conversation about that made my heart feel really open and happy. So thank you so much. Of course, of course, and thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, me too. It was Thank nice you. to meet you too.